In this video, we'll review the morphological features of the granulocyte precursors. First, to review granulocyte maturation, there are several key changes that the cells undergo as they develop into mature cells. In general, the cells gradually decrease in size as they mature. In terms of the nucleus, the size also gets smaller and the shape changes from a round or oval shape to becoming indented and eventually segmented. The nuclear chromatin transitions from loose and fine to coarse and condensed. Nucleoli are only present in the more immature stages. The cytoplasm first starts off as a blue color in the myeloblast stage and develops into a pink color throughout maturation. The myeloblast stage usually doesn't contain any granules and primary granules appear at the promyelocyte stage. The primary granules are usually not visible past the promyelocyte stage and then secondary or specific neutrophilic, basophilic or eosinophilic granules are apparent from the myelocyte stage onwards. Now let's take a look at some granulocyte precursors together. We'll start off with this myeloblast. So follow my cursor. If you take a look at the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you'll see a cell in a magnified form to help you notice the morphological details. So this myeloblast is a large cell. The cytoplasm stains blue or basophilic. This cell has a large nucleus with fine open chromatin and you'll see three nucleoli in there. Uh, there's one towards this top right here, one towards the top left, and one down at this end, and there may be a few um, smaller ones scattered throughout. We don't see any granules in this cell. Um, we typically don't see any granules in a myeloblast. This cell here is a promyelocyte. You'll see that it's still a large cell. It's common for promyelocytes to be larger in size than the myeloblasts. The cytoplasm still stains a bluish color and the nucleus is oval in shape with some pretty fine looking chromatin. Um, two nucleoli are seen in this nucleus. So one on this left side and one on this right side here. Primary granules are now apparent. They're small and deep purple to burgundy in color. Primary granules are not specific to any granulocyte. Um, they're seen in the early stages of the development of any granulocyte, whether it's a neutrophil, eosinophil, or basophil. This cell here is a myelocyte. The cell is now smaller than the previous cell stages of the promyelocyte and myeloblast. Uh, this nucleus is quite round in shape. Sometimes the nucleus can be flattened on one side. Now we start to see secondary granules based on the grainy appearance of the cytoplasm. The secondary granules are specific and help us to identify the fate of the granulocytes as neutrophils, eosinophils, or basophils. At this stage, it's still possible to see a few remnants of visible primary granules. This next stage of maturation is the metamyelocyte. Again, the cell size is decreasing and the character of the nucleus is further changing. The nucleus is now indented into a kidney shape with the chromatin being moderately clumped. The secondary granules are now more abundant. Over here, we have a band. The nucleus now has further indented and this one in particular is an upside down U shape, though a C or an S shape is also possible. The chromatin is lumpy, the cytoplasm is now quite pink and contains a lot more secondary granules. Over here I have a mature neutrophil. The nucleus is now segmented and the segments are connected by a thin filament. In a mature neutrophil, there are anywhere from two to five segments. The chromatin is even more packed now. 
and you'll see that this cell is noticeably smaller than the previous stages of maturation. Now with the granulocyte development, I've only focused on the neutrophil series. However, similar changes occur with eosinophils and basophils, with their specific granules appearing at the myelocyte, myelocyte stage, and we can identify what type of granulocyte those precursors have been programmed to mature into.